It has been a while since I've done a rig rundown, but the car behind me is owned by Michael, who has been on the Cape trip. He's been on another rig rundown, took out the first spot in the sprint. Uh, where else have you been? You've been on another episode. Oh, he's been around Australia in this thing, and he built it in like the nick of time. So we're gonna have a look at his new rig. He's gone from an LS wagon to an FTE ute. So let's rip straight into it. We're gonna do it backwards again today. So we're gonna start with all the challenges. So it's a bit more fun to watch and then stick around if you wanna see more of a detailed walk around of the ute we'll get into at the second half of this episode. Wow! Here we are, event number one. We're starting with the sprint. Now we've got a sick off-road, as usual, drag race. We've gotta go forward drive. You know the drill, you've taken the top spot before. I don't think this one's gonna beat the Supercharged LS. Don't know. But we'll don't give know. it a crack. No we'll give it a crack. Turn your bloody mic on. I've got Zach stepping out the steps because, uh, well, I've got a broken ankle. Well, it doesn't look broken, but it is. All right, now it's a sprint. So um, hopefully this does as good as the Supercharged Wagon did. I reckon tune one. No aircon for this one. Four, high. All right. Three, two, one. Don't miss the gear change. Don't miss the gear change. Wow! I don't believe it. It's in the sixes. Now, I like to keep myself on my toes because he was in the sixes with the LS. It's a 652. But I don't think it's the top spot. It's in probably the top three. I think I just did a six as well. Pretty good time. Pretty good time. Now, what time was that? Oh, you killed it. 652. What is that? In the sixes, what? Is that like, they'd have to be close. They'd have to be close. Dude, you're, you did a six something in your LS. <laughs> yeah, I was surprised. I was like, it's fast, bro. <laughs> there we go. We'll see how it sacks up. Right, next thing is the comfort challenge. I smell clutch. Or is it soot? Bit of both. Bit of both. <laughs> just make sure there's no holes and shit. Right, we're doing something different today. So the comfort challenge is normally done on either a sprint rough road or a rock climb hill. We're doing both today. I'm sending Michael down the back of the property, so it's gonna be a bit of speed, but it is very rough and kind of off camber and rocky. Look, you can tell, look at him. I'm hoping he'll just come up here and just do a jump or something. He probably won't, but we'll try and get him to do that. It's not that scary, just drive. Cutting us a path. A little longer than a few minutes later. Fun fact, I spent like half an hour looking for that plastic bucket. Found this in two seconds. Fluoro orange is the way, just like your car. <laughs> Thanks, GME. Alrighty, I'll count you in. Uh, you probably can't hear me because you're on the wrong channel, but fill out that bucket of water in three, two, one, go. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> Maybe cold water does help. It's bang on 70%. That's just really good. And you went <laughs> so hard. Yeah, put down there. That's really good. Yeah, this was it bobble like heading? Just... Yeah, this one was just all over the joint the whole time. <laughs> oh, sick. All right, let's go do flex and economy. And that wraps it up for the challenges. All right, we're here for the bloody uh, flex test. We, at least we have a forklift now, so it's easier. But as always, rear wheel. See how high she goes. Don't tip over. I've given you a lot there. Is that wheel turning? Nah, we're good. We're on the ground. We're on the ground. Oh, this... like, definitely no flex master. You're not. What did I say? Two meters? No. <laughs> 680 mil. 680. I don't think that's anywhere. No, see, the good shocks are good for like bumpy roads, but she ain't set up for flex. Maybe it's the airbags. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's the airbags. Alrighty, so the last challenge is economy. Now I'm not gonna bore everyone with filling up in that. You do know this, you've done a bit yeah, of a I've test before. So, so. Yeah, so pretty much while traveling, we kind of like nab on the head, 
12.1 as it is, yep. as fully loaded, the weight is, and then towing, you get about the 17, 17.1 towing. So it, takes, it makes a difference with the weight on the back, eh? Oh yeah, definitely, yeah, but 12.1 loaded on the- yeah, so stoked. good. I'm stoked. You yeah. might actually be on the leaderboard for that. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> and speaking of leaderboard, we'll be doing that, but first we're gonna go through a full detailed walk around of this. End of the episode, we'll jump onto the leaderboard and see how all of these stacked up against the other cars we've done, so stick around for that. Alrighty guys, I just wanna quickly interrupt this episode for the biggest giveaway we've ever done happening at the moment. So behind me, NP300 Navara, and we've got a ton of accessories on the trailer. So what we're doing, if you've ever wanted to come out and work on a car at the Build or Ball Workshop, now is your chance, because we are flying out the winner of this competition to come and spend a week with me and the team to pull all this gear on this car, then we go and do a trip, and then you can take the car home for yourself. If you're not into that, that's fine, we can build the car, but the option is there for you to fly out. All you gotta do, jump over to the website and grab um, one of the new limited edition t-shirts. We've also got sticker packs as well, um, and we have the stock on hand immediately this time, so we'll be shipping straight away. So jump in the competition, there's not long for this, it's only a couple of months we're running this, so be in the competition, in it to win it, good luck. Here we are, we're here with Michael Brown too, the, I think you're the only person ever to be on two rig rundowns. Got have some cool rigs, mate. Well, that's because you got, you got two rigs. Uh, this one behind me is your latest. You think you've learned a lot and this is better than the last one? Yeah, so this is like a um, kind of better version of the last one. We kind of thought what we did wrong and bits and pieces like yep. LS and then went diesel, so yeah. <laughs> like yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we went diesel this time and yeah, she's been great. Like, Yeah, it looks sick. It's an awesome colour. Let's start with that. What colour is it? So it's Bayside Blue, so Nissan GTR kept the factory Nissan colour. So it's yeah, GTR, Bayside Blue. That's and cool. So yeah. it's still a Nissan colour, but it's not a four-wheel drive colour. Not a four-wheel drive colour. from a, a Skyline. Yeah, 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 Skyline GDR, so. Sick. All right, so we're going to do on the front, start off the front, head to the back. Awesome, so we got a Jimmy Built bar, and then with no winch, because we don't get stuck around here. <laughs> you went around <laughs> Australia with no winch? Yeah, no winch, no winch. Um, we'll get there eventually, but yeah, nothing so far. Just some basic little spotlights on the front, GME aerial. Yep. And then from there, going to the front end. Full S4 converted front end, as originally the car was S2. To what year is it? 2001. Yeah, right. 2001. Oh, fuck. So it is an early model when you've done like a full facelift. Yeah, yeah, done a full facelift. Everything just bolted model. on sort of thing? Yeah, yeah, everything yep. just bolted on surprisingly. It actually was a sick. easy swap. And then I'll see paired with the Tech Futura headlights and then big front mount intercooler in the front behind that grill. Ah, uh, yeah, so come around the side. What else we got? It's all pretty standard here. It's all pretty standard. So obviously from the S4 conversion, it went to Vic off-road mirrors and then as well as something a bit different here. This is extra 100 mil because it has been space cap chopped. So it was a wagon. So it was a wagon. So it was a wagon. So yeah, all that work just for 100 mil. Yeah, I know, I know. Does it make a difference? <laughs> Definitely. You get, to, you get to put your seat back. It depends how so, tall you are. I, I don't mind yeah. the little single cab, but if you're a taller bloke, tall bloke, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, having the extra room would be good. And let's, then for something different, let's go inside first. Talking about that space cab, and then we'll get onto the tray and what's behind there, um, and then engine bay. What were you going to say then? Going to say, oh yeah, going to say it also is wrapped. It's all, oh, it's wrapped all nicely in nicely wrapped. Uh, PPF coating, all right. from um, bush wraps and slick as. So that protects coated. it from just stone chips and bits and pieces scratching. Yep. Just trying to keep self healing it. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the self healing stuff, so not too bad. It feels good too. Mm. All right, let's jump inside. All right, we're inside now. So you follow the theme through of Series Four. It's whole dash, everything. So, pretty much when we got it, it was all Series One, Series Two dash, so the old style. So, ripped everything out. Went all S4 dash, S4 steering wheel, S4 in all center console, S4 everything, and yep. then blacked out the whole roof. Everything's all blacked out. Yeah. To follow the S4 theme to make it look like it was originally S4. Yeah, yeah. The ga the cluster's got those bevels around it. Is that out of like a TI? Yeah, yeah so that new. was that was out of a 2015 or 2014 yep. TI S4. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's CAN bus, so that doesn't really work at the moment. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, sort of like mine. So you run it off a digital... Yeah, yeah, digital display yeah. at the moment. Yeah, yeah. All right, what else? Bunch of gauges, all usual shit boosts. Uh, yeah, so a bunch of gauges. So we've got, yeah, boost, all pressure. Yeah, exactly right. Then just some... Um, Little grip handles and obviously XRS, GME. Oh, yeah. XRS, so, XRS unit. And Stereo then, upgrade. Have you got a mad sub because you've yeah. got space in the back? <laughs> yeah. So it's got, a, it's got a big sub on yep. this side behind yep. the passenger seat well, and then there's a battery just there. Yeah, I do and notice then, that room. So normally the cab would stop like kind of, yeah, 100 million. So you'd be yeah. fully up against it, but you've still got room to go still back. Still got there. room to go back. And then just I also got a little like a doggy door sliding window. So when the canopy's off, I can actually like open that What's up. What's that off of? An that's, a, that's a canopy. That's a canopy window. No shit. Out of like one of those little like uh, fiberglass yep. canopies. Yeah. 
That's so sick. it's a bit um bit different. Very cool. And then obviously everything's been like dynamated and sounded. Yeah, and yeah, the whole the whole car. We all dynamated everything, the back wall, yep. roof, doors, everything's all been. Even behind the dash when the dash was out. Yep, so it's nice and quiet in here. Yeah, trying to be nice and quiet. Seats are XR6 again. XR6. Comfiest seats in the world. Oh man. Cheap, easy mod to do. And like all nice and comfy. Yeah. What else have I missed? Um, what have you missed? There's a little sneaky uni chip button there. So oh yeah, a little uni chip, yeah. That's right. This one's a little uni chip, so it's got five different tunes. I can switch yep. on the fly, just one, two, three. Goes from all the way from little power yep. to party mode, really. Yeah. <laughs> Limmy so, bash. Yeah, 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 Limmy bash. Um, and then everything's just in the in this little compartment. So. Oh, oh, that's very tidy. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, you can't <laughs> <on> that. <laughs> So ECU, so, is that all standard ECU just with the unichip attachment? Yeah, 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 so standard ECU and then the unichip just backs on into it and yep. then like, yeah, tricks it into what it Sick. needs to do. Um, should we go Andrew Bay or Canopy? Should we do front or back first? I reckon Canopy. Let's do that. All right, we'll talk about the tray first. Was this one you made or got made or? No, so this is just like, I took a massive risk. When we were like getting the tray sorted, I was like just on online trying to find a tray. Yeah. Found this come up, it was relatively quite cheap to be honest and I was like, hopefully this works. Drove always yeah. Sydney to grab this tray, brand yep. new. Um, got a wood board, a water tank in the headboard, yep. and then as well as come with a canopy, come with a trundle drawer. Right. Had toolboxes, but obviously the toolboxes didn't fit because of the space cab. Yep. Just want to make this look very nice. Yeah. So, um, so you, you have to move these flares a bit. Move it. To, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All aluminium too, so it's all aluminium. Yep. And then yeah, the canopy jacks off when we need it. Yeah. Sick. All right. Let's jump inside. Blacked out theme again. Plucked Mine's out. white, so it looks a bit different. Oh, you've got the nice bloody deck, deck armor, armor shit. Yeah. yeah, we're all nice deck armor. That's the new thing with canopies. You don't deck armor in your canopy, you're, uh, you've got to get around that because it makes it so much nicer. Not like I did steal that idea off you anyway, yeah. but yeah, keep it anyway. <laughs> Lots um, of ideas. Yeah. Let me find all the things that pick up and then you just do the right thing after that. Just come right behind you. Yeah, so fridges, Bushman 65, little Bushman fridge. Little baby one. Little baby one. How can we do that and then go bigger and like, what's, is this stuff above Yeah, here so this is kind of a um, work in progress at the moment with the switch panel. Yep. Um, it is going to be changed, but yeah, I want to have a switch panel and screen up here to read everything what's going on. Yep. And we've got another fridge on the other side, so I didn't need all the fridge oh, space okay, just true, here. Yeah. I'd rather have all my like inverter, everything, all the display just here. Same as up here, like Anderson cigarette sockets, yep. phone chargers, yep. bits and pieces. Wanted a pantry, wanted a slide out little kitchen area. Yeah, this thing's cool, hey? Ooh, yeah, pantry. yeah. So that's something they just sell and you just put in there. They just sell, put in there. That's pretty basic, like worked well for everything we need to put in there. And then yep. same as this, like this is Draw. the same thing. Drawer or cooking gear. Yeah. And then when you need extra room to cook on, that slides out. Table, yeah. That slides out and then cook everything you need. You got a travel buddy. Yeah. Have you mixed reviews, do you actually use it? Yeah, I do, I do. If anything, it's actually just to cook cheese on palmies, to be honest. Right. <laughs> this guy's <laughs> diet. I've been doing on a few trips with him. He eats nothing but shit. You don't want sausages? Palmy sausage you don't want rolls. Sausages? <laughs> actually, it's perfect for you. And then, of course, party speaker. Got party speaker, speaker up there. Yep. And then, obviously, just little hardcore lights, internal yep. on the canopy, and then on the outside. Yep. Man, simple and clean, all right? Let's yeah. go to the other side and have a look. All right, we're going this side. But before we do, I missed the tent and awning. You got a bit of a setup up there? Yeah, so I got Outback Tourist, 270 awning, rooftop tent, the newest edition, with uh, 400 watts of solar on the roof. No sh So the canopy is pretty much, at the moment, it runs with no car charger. Yep. It can just run off solar, but the solar does like 30 amps. Massive. So it's, yeah. Is that the same tent setup you had in your last car as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. same setup. Just um, just a newer addition, like a newer New version, version of it. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. Same tent though. Sweet. All right, this side, I assume just storage and stuff, a bit more room in here. There we go. Bit there we go. Spot for chairs, bags, swag. Pretty much, that. like it's pretty much, this spot is like all um, Taylor's going away clothing. Yeah. And then um, in here. It's is your little spot. Just my little spot, which I get. Just camera gear and then just clothing. Yeah. That's all that really goes in here, but at the moment it's just little bits and pieces, we're not yep. going away, so. And the other fridge, is this one fridge and freezer or just a fridge? Yeah, fridge and freezer. Oh, get fucked. <laughs> it's been Easter. This fridge is off, but eh? Uh, yeah, it's been off for a few days. I love chocolate. Yeah, just mm. give it a shot. Oh, milky bar. Dude, wow. these are good. How have you not eaten them all? <laughs> oh, yum. <laughs> this fridge has been like on and off for a few days, melted. <laughs> <laughs> it's not probably not a good thing to eat, but. <laughs> oh, and um, then, what else we got? Battery system. Mm, so, no, no. got all this is where all the battery system is. Mm -hmm. So at the moment we have got a 40 amp, sorry, 50, oh, 40 amp, but can do 50 amp DC DC and solar charger off the car and solar. Yep. 2000 watt inverter, AC charger for when the canopy is jacked off, not in sunlight, so I can charge the canopy still. And then obviously just your switch panel here for like Anderson, um, USB, 
and then lights to flick the lights. How big is the inverter? 2,000 watt. 2,000 yeah. watt. And then... Um, yeah, so your input charging up to 50, you said. Yeah, so I can... So what we've done recently is that DC-DC charger can do 50 amps of car. Yep. As well as I've got a hidden away um, solar controller. So while I'm oh, driving, okay. I can get up to 80 amps of solar. That's sick. Yeah. Sorry, 80 amps of car charging. Because mm. we've got a 240 amp hour lithium battery in there as well. Yep, yep. Behind the fridge and behind that setup. Sick. Keep it all hidden away. There you go. So that's upgrade from the last car as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think I had two AGMs and just a little little baby charger in that one. Still fucked up. I remember that at the cave. Oh You're man. Like trying to fix Ste steal, stealing all your power the whole time. <laughs> yeah. All right, engine bay. Easy. Let's go. FT power baby. So who's you copy this idea off? There's a few FT patrols yes, there's popping a, up. There's a couple. I'll copy this one off Mitch. He's made of my Mitch. Right. Well, no, I'm not disappointed. So when it comes to doing conversion, I was like, I was looking at motors. It was Duramax was on the cards, mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, pricing and bits and pieces, it was easy for myself to do this. Yep. Anyway, we bought this motor, and it blew up. Yeah. It blew up at a bent rod. So, so then it was we had, stock internal at that point? Yeah, it was yeah. stock internals at that point. Put on the dyno, and it was like, oh, I might have a bent rod, and didn't have a bent rod. It was a flood damaged motor, and it had rusty bores, everything was cooked in it. Yep. Still running, running back from the Gold Coast Brisbane every day. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, so pulled it back out, rebuilt it, so now it's a fresh motor. It's got head studs, pistons, rods, bottom end, everything. All so, the fruit. Because I've spoken about FTs before on my channel, and they're basically the best inline six diesel motor that you can sort of get that factory out of factory like out of factory yeah it's all over your tds and all that patrol yep. so to put like a toyota motor in a in a nissan is kind of a weird thing but it is probably the best part for me so now that oh, it's all definitely. forged it's pretty bulletproof yeah now it's bulletproof yeah i've seen some of the, the other boys put them through and um yeah they definitely move and yep. they definitely um put up with it so how far have you gone with this one um pretty much how far we Pretty much at the moment, we're at 370 at 950 new kilometers of torque. Yep, yep. So that was the biggest, and then pretty much the only limiting factor was turbo. Injectors were fine. Oh, okay. Turbo just goes up and runs over. Yeah, right. So you so, need a bigger turbo. Yeah, yeah. I pretty much got that turbo for low down towing yep. bits and pieces. But um, yeah, the next thing would be a bigger turbo, and then we could probably see around the 400, 450 yep, mark. Yeah, because when injectors are plus 70. Plus 70, then, yeah. yeah. 70s to go in there. And then on nice. top of that, yeah, the yeah. Uniship makes it all work. Same as the Uniship, it's got a boost control, so like, it's instead of it just changing fuel, it changes boost as well. Yep, yep. So, that All is right, great. Alright, we'll go through the details for people that might want to know what intercool is in there. Yep. Um, other bits and pieces. So it's just the Aeroflow, just the Aeroflow basic intercooler, yep. nothing too special about that. All stainless piping. So that's a 600 by 300? Yeah, 600 by 300. And how's the EGTs all fine? Not too bad, actually, pretty good. Yep. Um, they're actually staying pretty low, they stay around the 300 on the highway. Yep. And then yep. they start creeping when you're really into it. Yep. But um, that's all pretty standard, eh? Yeah. yeah. Not much more. There's no second battery in here because you've got tons of the canopy. In the canopy, that's what I mean. There's not too much happening. And the only thing that will be changed is, yes, airbox snorkel yep. coming out the driver's side because everything is switched. But yep. um, that is pretty much for the engine bay. And I see some sneaky things coming through yeah. the arches here with the suspension. Yes. Let's yes. a little segue. We'll get into what's under the car because they don't look stock at all. No, um, they're definitely not stock <laughs> in this one. Yeah. All right, let's go and underneath the car. All right, start the obvious wheels and tires. Probably some thirty fives on there. So same wheels from the last rig rundown. They're 70. the same as my same, rig. Yes, yeah, same wheels. <laughs> same I took them off the last car and yeah. put them back on this. Yes, yeah, so same wheels, same yep. tires. No, no changes there. So yep. Fuel covert, seventeen by nine. Yep. yep. And then thirty fives. And then you've gone ham with suspension. Something a bit different, a bit yes. more hardcore. Yeah, suspension's a bit different. So we went with everything is full superior. Yep. Um, this time, because last time we did a trip and a um, few things broke. Oh, I remember yeah. that. You learned your lessons. Superior engineering, yeah. way to go. <laughs> exactly. And then the front end is different. So now, this is where we get it. a bit special. So we got triple bypasses in the front, 10 inch travel. Yep. And then we've got also the hydro bump stops in the front as well. So they're really long. That's what was coming through the engine bay we saw before. Who's made all these towers? Is that so the, the towers are made by Cage Fabrication. Yep. The yep. towers are, and then you cut them to suit the tra um, the the you come to suit the shock travel. Right, yeah. So, so whatever, right because you can go up to, oh, I think it's like 16 inch shocks, yeah, right. but these are 10s. Yep, yep. So you can, yeah, you can come to suit and then you got the hydro bump stops as well to suit the oh, whole and setup. That's all strengthened, yeah. So you all strengthened, braced. For your hydros. Yeah, to be all braced so yep. they don't bend up when you're um, getting a bit into it. So the lift will be sitting on the front at sort of four inch, five inch. So yeah, it's sitting at four inch at the moment, yep. all engineered as well. Sweet, and then diff wise, bit of bracing on there. Yep, so diff's um, got full bracing from like pretty much edge yep. to edge. Same as the chassis, the chassis is fully braced yep. from ball bar to tow bar. Yep. 
And then um, as well as the rear diff, same thing, brace as well. Yeah. Lockers in there yet or not? Not yet, but I will need to get some soon. I've been <laughs> quite worried well, about that. Yeah, if you're going back to the Cape, maybe. Exactly. Um, other than that, all superior stuff, pretty standard. So the rear, same sort of thing. We've got some big triples. Yep. So the rear is obviously got a long range tank in the rear, so 145 long range, yep. and then as well as the superior stuff in the rear as well. Yep. Got some airbags to help towing, and so especially when the canopy's on, yeah. because the core rate is quite low, so I need those airbags to pump the rear end back yep. up. That tank's but big. So do, you don't have your sub in there, but no, I got rid of the sub because the sub originally, because it's a um, Ute chop. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't really work. Right. So, so how big is that tank again? 145. Yeah, so that's still enough, especially with the diesel now. One use yeah. much fuel. Oh yeah, exactly. And you haven't got a long arm kit. Interesting. No, I haven't got a long arm. Work, I guess, but yeah, at the time it was pretty much we wanted to get this thing built fast. Yep. And then um, yeah, it just went standard. I think plus tens. Yep. Plus tens. Yep. So yep. that was pretty um, easy to do. But yeah, long arms will probably be something in the future. Yep. Um, pretty much. And then coming to the rear, you got the trundle drawer. Yep. Spare tire on the back. And then yeah, full full size trundle drawer. So the thing is massive. <laughs> And there's nothing in here. There's nothing in here. Didn't you just go on a trip? I yeah. I just went on a trip and there's nothing in here. What so do you normally put in here? Just parts? So just tools, parts. That's pretty much it. Not, yep. not too much actually. Recovery gear. Yeah. But pretty much like once I get home, I've taken just everything out. Yeah. Leave the car bare. It's massive. I see why you bought it. Yes. What a steal, <laughs> eh? That's what I mean. Like it's just <laughs> massive. We saw everything in there. Yeah. But it's not waterproof though. But as you can see, it's all red dirt. Yeah. Bits and pieces. Sick. That covers most of the car. If you've got any questions, he does have Instagram, YouTube, all that stuff. You can ask him any questions about the build. We're going to jump straight into the leaderboard and pretty much wrap up this episode. Alrighty, guys, going to have to deal with a little voiceover for this one because a certain dog, not naming names, a certain puppy has destroyed my green screen. So, we're going to get straight into the leaderboard. Now, we started with the sprint. He got a 6.52. Now, Michael already has the top spot in his LSA patrol, but now he's done the uh, FTE patrol, which didn't quite get him there, but a fairly decent result towards the bottom of the field there as well. Then we move on to Comfort Challenge, which I thought was pretty good, but that didn't make it on the leaderboard with 70%. Same with the Flex, only 680 mil didn't quite make it with a lot of these Flexi boys out there. But in saying that, this is one of the best economies we have ever seen with a 12.1. Puts him tie, first, second position. I'm gonna give Bridget the benefit of the doubt here. She was the first female to come on, hold a top spot. I'm gonna leave her there, put Michael in second place. So tying together at 12.1 liters per hundred. So stay tuned for next Rig Rundown episode, guys. Thanks for watching and subscribe to the channel.